Then we gotta be ready. Yeah. We gotta be ready. We talked about this several weeks ago, for several weeks, that it is not all right to get ready, but it is proper to be ready. Be ready. I'm gonna run past it one more time for you. See, because when you have to get ready, it means that you're preoccupied. You're doing stuff. You might miss something. But if you're ready, when you hear the word, you just go. So the word says, be ready. Yes. Be ready. Yes. Praise God, because he's coming back, like he said, because yes. he's not a man that he should lie. Amen. As a matter of fact, he can't lie. Amen. Because yes. if he tells one lie, then the whole Bible is wrong, and we're all going to hell, and yes. this is all useless. <laughs> No, we don't so, want to go there, so I'm saying, he's got to be true. Yes. Amen. He's got to be true. Yes. And if we believe what he says, then we better be ready. Amen. Because he says, just as you saw him leaving, that's the same way you will see him coming back. Yes. And the dead in Christ will be caught away to meet him in the air. And we will forever be with the Father. Yes. That, that's that glorious day that we're all looking forward to. Yes. We're all looking forward to that. Praise God. Okay. And, and that, that other song that went just before that one says, I decided to follow Jesus. We better look at that one way sign. <laughs> There's only one way. That's why they put a one way sign over there and this way. That's the only way, folks. You know, don't let nobody see you. Oh, there's many ways. No, Jesus says, I am the way. Amen. There's only one way. Yes. And I am the way. So we got to heed that side and, and go that one way. We can't be all over the place and get there. It's one way and one way only. Praise God for Jesus. Amen. Praise God for Jesus. Because he's coming back. Yes. He'll be back. Yes. He will be back. Praise God. Just get started this morning. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Or have you thought about who you are? Have you cut yourself down lately? Well, today is a brand new day. And this is the first day of the rest of your life. So when you leave here today, you are going to know that you're somebody great and somebody special. You're going to know it because I'm going to remind you of how you got there. You knew it, but you probably forgot. But we're going to get back. We're going to get back. Today we're going to talk about a guy by the name of Jabez. There's not much said about Jabez. But what is said is life changing and it will change your life. But you gotta hear. You gotta hear it. And first Chronicles chapter four, verse nine, it says, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bear him with sorrow. Yes. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, 
Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast, and that your hands might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me, and God granted him for that which he requested. Mm -hmm. It's all you're gonna ever get about Jabez. Yeah. It's all you're gonna ever get about Jabez. I heard a sermon once about Jabez. Didn't get much, don't remember much. But today, I got something for you. I got something for you today. First, Jabez, Jabez was in the lineage of Judah. Judah being the fourth son of Jacob. So Jabez and Jacob, Jabez, Jabez and Jacob, did the same amount of letters in both names, but that don't mean nothing. Absolutely. I don't mean that. <laughs> but both men, Jabez and Jacob, was born with a tag. Yeah. They were born with tags. Jacob was born holding on to his brother's heel. Yeah. Then he grew up and he sold or he purchased his brother's birthright with a bowl of stew. Yeah. Then he tricked his father into giving him his brother's blessing. And Jacob was called a deceiver. He was deceptive. Jabez was called a son of sorrow. Son of sorrow. Both men starts out with disgrace, but they ends up in a good place because with God, with God, they were able to overcome mm -hmm. their shame yeah. and to end up in, in a good place. You see, Jacob, on his way out of town after his brother decided to kill him, he spent the first night in the desert. Mm -hmm. And it says that he had a dream and he saw a letter extending from heaven to earth and angels descending and ascending on that letter. But God stood at the top of the letter. And God made Jacob a promise. And Jacob, in turn, made a vow unto God. This is all found in Genesis 28, if you're interested in, in reading. But Jacob went on to be the father of a nation, God's chosen people, the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel. But we don't want to tarry much with Jacob today. We want to visit and spend some time with Jabez. Because yeah. Jabez, it says, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. But Jabez has cause. Mm -hmm. See, Jabez started out with a strike against him. Yeah. When you saw Jabez coming, oh, here comes that son of pain. Mm -hmm. Yo, bless his mother's heart. She had to put up with him. And she had to go through all of that suffering with him. Yeah. So you see, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers because Jabez put more effort into life than his brothers. Jabez had to try to overcome his title. So Jabez had put a lot of thought into his situation or into his circumstances. It says, and Jabez was constantly in the presence of people who called him the son of sorrow or the son of pain. You can, you can interchange the word pain and sorrow. He was always in contact with people who called him. So he had to seek a higher power. You see, he had to go higher than his surroundings because they were just like him. They called him what they knew, the son of pain or the son of sorrow. They had no help for him. He had to seek a higher power. So it says that Jabez called on the God of Israel. And I hope you heard what I just said when I said that Jabez called on a higher power, a higher power. Please pay attention to that. Because you see, if you are in trouble, 
Or if you're in a place where you don't want to be, all we can do is talk to you about it. You might need to call on a higher power. Amen. You might need more help than we're able to give you. Yeah. See, so Jabez called on the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. See, and do your research, do your research, because you see, this is the only sure thing. The God of Israel, the only sure thing. Everything else is subject to failure. Mm -hmm. But he never does. And he never will because he can't fail. And, and he loves you unconditionally. Yes. He loves you unconditionally. And with him loving you unconditionally, you can't make him stop loving you. And if you can't make him stop loving you, that, that means he's always in your corner. He's always on your side. So you, see, you might think about calling on a higher power. So Jabez says, it says in, in verse 10, it says that Jabez said, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. If only, if only I could truly have that blessing. If only I could truly have that blessing. You see, this is perfect. This is perfection. Jabez had thought this thing through and he needed that blessing because you see, when you have the blessing of God, then you have God's favor. Yes. Yes. Amen. You have God's favor, and you are content yes. and at peace. Yes. 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 You see where I'm going with this? Yes. If you get God's blessing first, and you are content and at peace, then you can handle everything else that you can get. You see, but we sometimes run ahead of that, and we want everything else first. Yes. Uh, uh, you know. Yes. I'll be content if I get a new car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll be content if I get that million dollars. No, get the content first because if you don't have contentment and peace, whatever you get, you ain't going to use it right anyway. Right? No. You're not going to handle it right. No. Mm -hmm. So when you got the peace and contentment, mm -hmm. now you can deal with everything else. Mm -hmm. No, no. You need yes. the contentment and peace. No. So Jabez says, if I could just have that peace, if I could just get that peace. You see, Jabez knew God as God. He knew God as God. I'm going somewhere with this. When you know God as God, you see, it is fruitile to stand around and beg God. Yes. See, Jabez didn't ask God for anything, but he asked God to show him how to access what God had already given him. Yeah. Because when you know God as God, then you yes. know that God is yeah. the supplier of all things. Yes. That God is the creator of all things, and God has all things. And if God is loving you unconditionally, then everything he has, it says in the Romans, since he was able or desirous to give you his only son, what else wouldn't he give you? So you see, he everything that he has is already yours. Everything that he has is already yours. So you see, Jabez didn't have to beg for anything. He just needed the, the wherewithal to access what God had already given you. See? Give me the blessing. If I could just have that blessing. The blessing was here. God had said, here's the blessing. And Jabez is looking at the blessing saying, boy, I wonder if I can really have that. <laughs> I, I wonder if it's okay for me to take that. God, God had given it to him. So he says, oh, that I be blessed indeed. Can I really take this back? Can I truly take this? He's already given it to me. So you see, Jabez wasn't begging. I'm, I'm taking us to a place where we, we find ourselves lacking in most cases because the first time that we find ourselves in need, we don't care about what God has given us. We're on our knees begging God, God, please give me, please give me, please. Yeah. He's already given it to yes. us. right. Everything that he has is yours. Scripture tells you, Galatians, that you are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Everything that God has, you have. So you see, Jabez 
is starting out right. He wants the blessing first so that he can have peace and contentment so when he gets the other stuff, he'll know how to handle that. That's right. Mm -hmm. He goes on and he says, next he says that, and his hand, I want his hands mm -hmm. to be upon me. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want his hands to be upon me. See, you don't have to pray, God, please come and help. I want his hands to be, he's here, but just let me take his hand and put it on me. Mm -hmm. Because I want, I want to, to walk in the spirit as opposed to walking in the flesh. And I know that if his hand is on me, I'm gonna always be protected and guided in the right direction. Right. Amen. Amen. See, sometimes we, we looking in the wrong area. When we got God's hand upon us, then we're protected mm -hmm. and we'll always go in the right direction. Yes. God said, no, I am with you always. I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. What do we find ourselves doing? Trying to run away from him. Amen. He'll never leave us or forsake us. So if we stay in his will and in his word, then he'll always be there. But when we turn to run away, we may run into anything because he's going to let us go. But when we get where we're going, he's going to be there. <laughs> he's going to be there. There ain't no word you can go to get out of his presence. So run from him all you like. But he is where you are. So Jabez is saying, hey, I just want his hand up on me. So when I'm walking, I, I, I just feel his presence. I know that he's there. I, I'm never worried about going in the wrong direction. Because I know that hand of God will steer me in the right place. You see, Jabez is in a position here that he doesn't like. He don't like who he is. He don't like who people think he is. He is trying to change himself. He wants a makeover. Not one of them that Maybelline does. <laughs> he wants to be made over from the inside out. You see, because he has that stigma. He's trying to get away from the stigma. So if he can get the blessing of God and get God's hands up on him, then he will always be in, in the right direction. See, because he says there, to enlarge my coast. Mm -hmm. Enlarge my coast. Let me cover more territory. Mm -hmm. that, that's what the, the New King James says. New King James says it that way. It says, increase my territory. And the Amplified says, extend my border. And my trusty King James, he says, enlarge my coast. Yeah. See, he's not talking about real estate. No. He don't want no more land or no property. He wants to be able to reach more people. He wants to be able to do good in more places. Again, he is trying to get away from his stigma of being the son of pain. He wants to change people's perception of him by the way he conducts himself now as opposed to being stuck in what he was born with. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say, Jabez's message to you is that if you think that you are lost, if you think that you are no good, if you think you're bad, if you think you're nothing, then there's hope in prayer and you can change. Amen. You Praise will God. change. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you God. must never forget that it depends on you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Only you can change you because you have dominion over you. Yes. No, 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 no. Come on now. You Come have on. dominion over you. So only you can change you. Can't nothing or nobody change you. Or again, if I had that Mercedes and a million dollars, I'd be a different person. No, you'd be the same fool with a Mercedes and a million dollars. Come on, right. come on. Yes, you have to change. Yes, you have to change. And then, 
with that blessing of God and contentment, then you know how to handle mm -hmm. the Mercedes and the man. Mm -hmm. Th this is what Jabez is pointing out to us here, that we, we have to start from the beginning. He started out in disgrace and shame. Mm -hmm. And he wants to end up honorable. Mm -hmm. as, as the word said, that it starts out, it tells us the, the, the completion of Jabez's quest. He says, and Jabez was more honorable than his brother. He was more honorable than his brother. And then it tells us why or how he got to it. It says because his mama named him Jabez because she buried him in pain and called him the son of Saul. Yeah. Because I bore him in so much pain. So you see, that's what Jabez was walking around with. But Jabez, unlike his grand-grand-grandfather, Great, great, great grandfather, Jacob, he didn't live out his title mm -hmm. to be changed later in life. When we start out, you remember, Jacob, it says that when Rebekah was pregnant with Jacob and his brother Esau, that she was having a rough pregnancy and she cried out to God because it was tearing her apart that her stomach was hurting so much. And the God told us that you got two nations in there and they're fighting with one another. Amen. Amen. Glory God. Amen. They're fighting with one another. Amen. And then when she gave birth, it proved to Jacob come out hanging on to his brother's heel. Yeah. Like, no, you ain't going out first, I am. But the brother beat him out. <laughs> so from that day on, he cheated his brother. Yeah. Bought his birthright with a yeah. bowl of stew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then tricked his dad into giving him his brother's brother's blessing. And this is why he had to leave town on the land. Yeah. His brother decided, well, I'll just kill this guy because he's <laughs> 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 But God showed up. Yeah. But God showed up. Yeah. Listen, Jabez is, is, is living his life on a different trail. He doesn't like the stick. He doesn't want to live up to being the son of pain. So he's asking God to show him how to use all the things that God has provided for him. Yeah. Hook me up with that blessing so that I'll be calm, so that I'll be content, so that I'll be at peace, so that I'll have your favor, yeah. and I know that I don't have to worry about anything. And then enlarge my territory mm -hmm. so that I can do good and be yeah. memorable and be nice yeah. and affect more people's yeah. lives. Mm -hmm. But keep your hand on me. Mm -hmm. Keep your hand on me. Because yeah. I don't want to be steered in the wrong direction. I don't want to, to, to fall off my beaten path. I want to stay on course. And I want to be protected. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth thing that he asked for he says that that you uh, that you might keep evil away from me. This, this one is good. Keep me from evil that it may not grieve me. Keep me from evil that it might not grieve me. Keep me from evil. Keep me from being hurt or damaged by anybody. Don't let me be hurt or, or receive pain mm -hmm. from anybody. Yes, but that it might not grieve me. Don't let me hurt or cause pain to anybody. Yes. So I won't be sorry yes. for what I've done. Yes. Yes. See, his very name said that he was pain. So if, if you keep evil from me so I don't be hurt or in pain, and then keep me from hurting or causing pain to anybody else. Mm -hmm. Jacob mm -hmm. hadn't followed Jabez's lead, even though Jacob came first. He did different. Mm -hmm. Jabez didn't like who he was. He wanted to change. Mm -hmm. So he sought the higher power. And he gives us the example of how we can go about our change in our life by simply following God's standard. Yes, Lord, yes. Understanding who God is yes. and seeing God for God, yes. not God as Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, every time I get in trouble, now I gotta go pray. Mm -hmm. Don't stick with him all the time. Yes. 
always be in his presence. Mm -hmm. Let his hand always be upon you. So that you will be nice and mannerable mm -hmm. to the people you come in contact with. So you affect more people with goodness mm -hmm. and kindness. Yeah. So that nobody will hurt you yeah. and you won't hurt anybody. You see, all of these things was already promised to Jabez. He just needed God's help in steering him and, and pointing him in the right direction so that he could be who he wanted to be. And he wanted to be a good guy. Yes. He didn't want to be recognized as the son of time. Yes. And the Bible says, and God granted him all of his requests, meaning his prayer was answered. His prayer was answered. He went from the son of pain to the son of honor. God changed him. He couldn't change himself. The people he hung out with and that he knew, they had no help for him. So he sought the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. And Jabez's prayer is a prayer that revolutionizes men's life, takes them out of a place of darkness and sets them over into a place of light. Yeah. Because that same God, that same God that changed Jabez from the son of pain to a son of honor stands ready to change you. Yeah. 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 He stands ready to change you. He wants to change you. But you have to ask. You have to do what Jabez did. You see, we can't we can't read the story and say, oh, that was a good story, and that's what's gonna happen to me. No, you gotta step out. You gotta step out. Sometimes you have to seek the higher power. You have to seek the higher power. And that same God will change you. He'll be standing at the top of that ladder as he was with Jacob and saying, come up here. Come up here. Move out the street called Slump. Because there's plenty of vacancies on High Street. Many vacancies on High Street. Get out of that city that's called Despair and move to the city called Bliss. Oh, yeah. Leave the state of turmoil yes. and enter into the state of peace. Yes. See, God has much more in store for you than you're willing to ask for. He has much more in store for you than you're willing to ask for. Oh, I can't ask God that. He's the only one that got it. Yeah. He's the only one that got it. Yes. And you know what else? It's like, you take over now. <laughs> he knew you needed it before you asked for it. Right? He already knew that you needed it before you asked for it. So he's willing to age you. He is your source. He is the supplier. You see, we go to work every day and we think, oh man, I gotta keep this job, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta do that, because that is my source. No, it's not. Amen. He is your source. Yes. Yes. Have you not read that he is the one that gives you the power to get well? And if he gave you that job to get that, he'll give you the ability to get another one, better. He is the God of impossibilities. If one door closed, a better door will open. Yes. Yes. I can accept to that one. Yes. You will never shut out or shut down. He has more to offer than you're willing to ask, but you have to go by the rules. You have to stay in his will, in his presence. You can't go your own way and then expect God to bail you out. You gotta be on the path. Jabez, it says, knew God as God. He understood the power of God. So 
all he didn't ask him for anything. He asked him to just show him how to access mm -hmm. what he already had. You know? I bring a new Rolls Royce over and sit it in your driveway and throw the keys on the back porch. You got a Rolls Royce out there, but you can't drive it till you find the key. <laughs> See, I already gave it to you. And you called me up. I thought you were going to give it to me. I gave it to you. But I can't get in it, and I can't do it because I don't have the keys. Well, apparently you ain't looked. The keys is on the porch. <laughs> God already get to it, but you have to do something to access, to access it. Mm -hmm. This is what JBS has showed us, that we need to access what we already got. But we have to seek that out. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I'm talking about going to the source. Mm -hmm. Going to the source. You have to go to the source. He is the source. He is the reason. He is the purpose. He is all in all for all. Mm -hmm. There is no other. There is no other. So that's what we have to do. We have to seek him. Mm. Some powerful stuff there, Pastor. What? <laughs> <laughs> I say, when we leave here today, we should have a different yes. outlook on our life because we are somebody. Amen. We are somebody. When the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the creator of the universe, cares more about you than anything else in the universe, that should give you power. Mm -hmm. That should give you standing. Mm -hmm. That should give you status. I am. When he created the earth, what did he he said, now let's make a man just like us and give him dominion, dominion over all of the stuff mm -hmm. that we just made. Now, now. All right now. Come on, hit it. He wouldn't have did that if he didn't care. No. And if he didn't think you could handle it, he wouldn't have done it. But then again, that's why his hand needs to stay upon us. Yes. You see, because if we got everything that he gave us, we wouldn't last too long. That's right. Amen. We'd wipe ourselves out. <laughs> Five out of the ten of us would want to go out and get ourselves uh, 747 because we don't want to drive nowhere. We want to fly nowhere. <laughs> So since I am the son of God and I can have anything I want, I'm just going to get me a jumbo jet. <laughs> See, that's why his hands got to be up on So we know our limitations. We know how to operate in God's will. Not just running out being crazy nuts. But I, I want to impress upon you that that same God that same God is standing ready to change you from anything that you don't want to be. And I'm going to leave you with this. If you was in a house, if you was in a house, and you were scared to walk because everywhere you walked, the floor cracked, and some places it already fell in, and you thought you were going to fall through, and you had no power in there, and the windows was all broke out, the roof leaked. I mean, everything was wrong with the house that could be wrong with a house. How long would you stay there? You would move. Quick faster than the earth. You would move. This is the same plan that God has for our lives. When things get so bad in our circumstances that we can't stand it or we're too scared to operate in it, we need to move. We need to change. This is what Jabez said. He didn't like who he thought he was. He was in a building that was just wrecked, according to him, because everybody thought it was the house of pain. He wanted to be in a house where he could walk with his head, where he wouldn't be ashamed. 
This is what he's saying to us. When we get to the place where we don't like who we are and what we're doing and how we are conducting ourselves, then change. You and only you can make that change. And God stands by ready and willing and able to help you with it. You see, because he made you and can't nobody change but him. He's the only one that can give you the power to change. But you have to want to. You have to want to. Because you have dominion over you. Remember, that's what he said? In our image and in our like it, dominion. You have dominion over you. You have the ability to change. You're the only species that he made like that. You can change. Dogs don't change. Cats don't change. They, they meow and they run and they do, do all the things that they do. Yeah. I don't want to go into the stuff that they do. But you can start to do something and say, no, I don't think I'll do that today. Well, no, I think I'll do this today. We have that ability to change. That's what God gave us, and that's what he wants us to use to come up. Come up here. Come up here. Be better. Don't live in squalor. Don't be in that slump all the time. Don't be in despair. Don't be in turmoil. Move out. Move out. And if you don't know that God, and you want to know him as Jabez knew him, today is the first day of the rest of your life. You can choose him today. You can choose him today. He stands ready to receive you into the family of Christ. And when you are in the family of Christ, then you become joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And then everything that belongs to him belongs to you. But you've got to be in the family. So I, I invite you this morning to join those of us who know Christ as Christ, who stands on Christ's promises and on Christ's principles, knowing that Jesus loves us. Jesus loves us. And he told us so. That, that's, that's the first thing I think we get. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible told me so. Amen. And that Jesus wants you to come. That Jesus wants you to be part of his family. That Jesus wants you to meet him in the kingdom. As we were saying earlier, he's coming back. He's coming back. So are we going to be ready when he gets back? Where are we going to be standing when he puts the sheep on his right hand and the goats on the left hand? And he says to the sheep, come into the rest that was prepared for you by my father. We want to be on that right side. We want to be on that right side. So if you don't know Jesus, come and, and get acquainted with him. Or if you just have an incident or a set of circumstances or something in your life that you'd like to have prayer for. We have prayer warriors who stand ready to, to pray with you this morning, to help you to make that transition. Sometimes we know that we have a problem, but we don't really know how to address it. We don't know exactly what to say. Well, you will learn that there is really no formula for how to address it. Just say what you mean, say what you want. But come and let a prayer warrior pray with you and give you some ideas of come and agree with you mm -hmm. on what you would like to have. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Jesus loves you no matter what. We talked about that a little briefly, that unconditional love. You see, when you sin, Jesus don't hate you. Jesus don't hold it against you. Jesus loves you just as much after you sin as he did before you sin. But the trick is, he don't like what you did. And the sooner that you realize that you did wrong and confess that sin, he is faithful to forgive you that sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And you're right back where you started from. That's the love of God. And that's what that unconditional love means. 
So if you want to be prayed for this morning, if you have anything to pray with somebody with for or with, then come forward. Don't be ashamed. We're all family. We all love. Mm -hmm. Amen. We don't think nothing of it. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, mm -hmm. that you have given us a road map yes. that we might find our way to the kingdom. We ask that you would give us boldness, the boldness, Father, to follow it. We ask that you would give us the boldness to stand on your principles and on your word. We ask you, Father, as Jabez did, to show us mm -hmm. how to access all of the blessings and benefits that you provided for us. Give us that blessing, Father. Lay your hands upon us. Enlarge our territory and keep us from evil so that it don't grieve us. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for all that you are. Mm -hmm. And we thank you, Father, that you love us. We thank you that you allow us to be part of your family. And we ask in the name of Jesus, Father, that as we go from here today, that you would go before us and behind us, keeping our feet on that narrow path. But, Father, help us to be what you want mm -hmm. us to be. Help us to reach that decision in our hearts and in our minds, Father, to where we count on you for all things. And we count you as being our Lord and our true Christ. We give it up to you this morning, Father. And thank you for all that you are. In the matchless name of Jesus, amen. 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 amen.